all know the Minister of Transport is not a commissioner politician. He tweets, he is walking in his own right, he's a very happy communicator, and I know that when he stands there, the fire went all the way. <laughs> He has got followers, some of uh, which I'm sure are here, and friends across the age, social and political divide. His use of ways to describe and disarm his opponents are legendary. The <laughs> <laughs> perfect example, Minister, was what happened uh, in the recent budget speech. As he spoke and when his colleagues, uh, became a little settled and started making noise. He paused and stand his head to them. You must keep quiet. Soon you will be posting on something that you haven't listened to. And I thought that was very unfair on the part of the minister to just continue without giving his colleagues an opportunity to at least Google the meaning of the word "bebos." <laughs> was called Mr. Rasmatas. As Minister of Police, he became Mr. Fia Foba. <laughs> now, as Minister of Transport, he has become Mr. Fixit. <laughs> he gives so much currency to his position that even his very conviction Minister of Transport of the Republic of South Africa sounds like his nickname. <laughs> Maybe all of these um, honorable guests can be attributed to the Minister's political upgrade plan. Having examined the Minister's profile and in particular his 80 years in politics, I saw two common denominators. He was Secretary of the State President of Secretary of the State President of the He was publicity, publicity Secretary of the Vuchavelo Youth Congress in the 80s, <coughs> after which he became Secretary of the Provincial Youth uh, uh, Structures then in 1990 working very closely with the legendary Peter Mukama. In the 80s, again, uh, he was a leader in courses. He was secretary and president of the Buchavele Youth Congress. He was vice president of uh, Buchavelo Student Congress as well. Between 1998 and 2004, he was secretary general of the ANC, after which he became president uh, in uh, 2004 until 2008, when he handed over the presidency to someone else. He joined formal government uh, structures in 2009 as deputy minister of the police. Uh, after which he became uh, Minister of Sports and Recreation in uh, uh, 2010. He later became Minister of Police until 2017. And here we are, he's our Minister of Rail, Air, Sea and Land Transport. He is also a member of the National Executive Committee of the ANC and he serves as the head of elections. Prior to this, he was head of mobilization uh, uh, of uh, his organization, the ANC. The minister is a well-known internationalist at some point, uh, and I think it was in 2004, he was president of the Student Youth Socialist International, where he worked very closely with uh, the current Secretary General of the United Nations. If you look at the kind of positions that the, 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 the minister has had in government uh, and in his organization, the ANC, 
They are the kind of positions that require high volumes of energy, physical presence, teamwork, and a need for, for transformation. The latter is the reason why he's here today, and I'm sure he'll talk to that. As regards his passion for teamwork and his attitude to teams that wins, we all know what the minister will say to a team that doesn't win. He will call it a, bit, a bunch of something. <laughs> it is with uh, humility and a sense of jubilance, minister, that I take this opportunity to introduce you and to present you to this very versatile, gracious audience before us. This audience is a bunch of winners. Honorable Minister. Um, the Director of Civil Aviation is Bobby Koza, Chief Executives, representing various industry stakeholders, Chairperson of the IOP. Guests, ladies and gentlemen, as we conclude the Women's Month, we must reaffirm our unwavering commitment to advancing women emancipation through our actions on a daily basis. But in Daba Faz, we are tilting for water, Uzabu Fa, finish and climb. Thomas Sankara, a Pekina revolutionary and a former president of Pekina Faso, immortalized this sentiment when he said, quote unquote, there is no true social revolution without the liberation of women. May my eyes never see and my feet never take me to a society where half the people are held in silence. I hear the roar of women's silence. I sense the rumble of their storm and feel the fury of their revolt. There can be no talk of poverty eradication, job creation of, or transformation without placing women at the center of the agenda. During my budget vote speech in July this year, I recounted tales of my childhood. I spoke of a memory I had as a boy growing up in a dormitory township. Away from the glamour of city lights, I reminisced about the allure of the aviation industry juxtaposed against its inaccessibility. If the dream of being a pilot was unfathomable for a young man such as myself, how much more unimaginable could it have been for my female counterpart, who had to ensure triple oppression on the basis of a race, class, and gender. Indeed, we have come a long way as a nation and made many strides in balancing the gender equation. Today, we celebrate women pioneers and trailblazers who have broken through the glass ceiling in the aviation sector and challenged the exclusion of women on the basis of their gender. And this includes Asnaf Mahab, South Africa's first African female commercial pilot, Buitume Lokatisi, commercial pilot and founder of aviation development, Africa, Fatima Jakut, founder of the Sakimfa Foundation. And yet, we say it's not yet enough, it's not yet Uhuru, and they were still far from achieving what we're supposed to achieve. These women, and many more, made it against tremendous odds and succeeded not only in terms of their individual achievements, but also in clearing the path 
for the empowerment of others. Transformation remains a stubborn challenge confronting this sector. The barriers to entry are high, and those who continue to benefit from the many opportunities it provides are few. However, the tide is turning, and we are encouraged by the many initiatives that will undoubtedly change the face of aviation sector. More than 105 years since the first commercial aircraft took flight, women constitute less than 6% of pilots across the world. A percentage even more concerning emerges when we consider statistics relating to other aviation technical personnel, business ownership and leadership positions in the sector. According to Stats SA, the air passenger transport industry in South Africa has the highest proportion of white employees. Furthermore, the only area that is well represented by women is that of cabin crew, where there are 3,834 female flight attendants as opposed to 1,142 males. More effort is needed to ensure that women representation finds expression across all technical areas in the sector. This must be achieved through deliberate and targeted interventions to educate and provide technical skills to the girl child. Since the advent of democracy in our country, the meaningful participation of women in government, parliament, public and public private sector has been supported by both legislative frameworks and tangible actions by the ANC as a governing party across all spheres of government. According to the rankings of countries in the Gender Gap Report Index, which categorizes the aspects of economic participation and opportunity, educational attainment, health and survival, and political empowerment, South Africa ranked at number 19 out of 149 countries. This is an affirmation that our deliberate efforts to empower women are bearing fruit. We outrank countries such as Switzerland, the Netherlands, Australia, and the United States. We must take pride in the fact that South Africa, through its aviation authority, was the first country to host an aviation gender summit, which was already alluded to. We need to build on this initiative in a sustainable way and ensure that its resolutions find a practical expression. We can ill afford to disregard any opportunity to uplift women and to build aviation careers and skills that will propel our country and economy to new heights. We have come a long way, but the road ahead is long and challenging. And, and if we are to succeed, we must redouble our efforts and not rest on our laurels. As we get down to business, we need to ask ourselves, how can we propel the aviation gender scenario in South Africa to where it will make the greatest difference and will be felt the soonest? What is the most urgent and most important task we need to undertake? How do we meaningfully change perceptions about gender roles in aviation? How do we support the NDP objectives in a sustainable way? These are some of the issues we should interrogate in depth at this summit. The need to change the perceptions of women in aviation is an important issue that remains topical. We need to eliminate biases and stereotypes in the whole school and workplace in an effort to increase access for girls to education, promote leadership, training to women in middle management to prepare them for senior positions, foster and coach and mentoring environment, and share gender-related best practices. There are definite steps that we can take now. This is especially true for marketing in all its 
forms. We need to look at our workplace and how we could possibly encourage top management to enable women to flourish there. We should look at models that have worked elsewhere. What can we do to make life easier for female passengers on airplanes? And how can we make the industry aware of human trafficking? And what measures do we need to put in place to ensure that aviation is not an enabler of this heinous crime? Ladies and gentlemen, if there is one thing that we can do, it is to connect with one another and to make sure that we do not work in silos. What about training? Let's connect the dots and share our expertise. It will be cost saving to use expert trainers for greater numbers of students and will make the sharing of expertise easier and more productive. Similarly, when greater numbers of enthusiastic aviators and students work together, we can share our strength and even our needs to reach our objectives more easily. We must encourage sharing of common vision and goals on gender, strengthen partnerships through platforms such as the South African Network for Women in Transport, established in 2008, born out of a need to break existing barriers of entry into the sector and to demystify existing myths. In conclusion, it is encouraging and indeed inspiring to see the commitment made by so many stakeholders and participants of the aviation industry, demonstrated by the attendance at the summit today. I agree with the Director of Civil Aviation that this testifies to the importance placed by the industry on matters of gender equality. For that reason, I believe that you, the captains of industry, will be as enthusiastic as I am to sign the pledge as an affirmation of our commitment to advancing the cause of women in our different entities, organizations, and companies. I stand here to say to all of you, to note and to understand that I'm not a paper tiger. I'm not a, a filmmaker. I don't act in Hollywood. I believe in practical steps. What I sign here must translate into action. in this summit because we'll have another one next year. It will just happen on August month. I want when you finish on your own, you must come and tell me as the minister, what decisions have you taken that are going to accelerate transformation and gender equity in this particular industry? I don't want slogans, insurrectionary phrase mongering. I want action and action and action. And that's what I want. I don't want us now in the next five years to tell me there is nothing happening in this industry. Maybe you don't know. The reason why maybe I came to this Ministry of Transport, I was heading elections of this, and uh, I organized women and uh, many other people across the walk of, of all walk of life to check in the 25 years of freedom, how far have we gone to transform our society? Because most of us who were sent here in government, were sent in our entities to transform, but we ended up being transformed by the system ourselves. And we became the best representative of anti-progress because we are too much compatible. <laughs> and when I called all people in certain convention centers, we were in an election campaign, good mood and everything else. And then Asnaf came and spoke about the industry. And uh, I was affected, and I was seated next to the president. And the president just looked at me. And that, that was the second incident that affected the transport department. The first one was the breakdown of trains. The truth you must know, when that train broke down, we went there to Ghana votes. We didn't go there to fix things. <laughs> and then we met this problem. 
uh, on, 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 you know, we got into the trains because when you converse and you talk to people, you want to be ahead of everybody. So I came with this brilliant idea. I said, President, let's get into the train. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know. <laughs> and then we knew that the train, there were issues and all of that, but not with that much. The people arrived late and all of that. Now, us now, talking about the challenges we have faced in this industry and saying, breaking down the numbers. Certain convention center was full to capacity. And I began to question the moral of our struggle. Why did we go to jail and fight? And why do we abandon the slogan, Aluta continue? Yeah. The struggle continues. And uh, that means nothing else, that when you are given a responsibility, you must never forget that the struggle is not over. And uh, you must continue to fight. Up until these young people, women, and all our people are liberated. Like Mandela said, let freedom reign, liberate all our people. We are not free. And we tell ourselves lies that we are free. Because planes are flying, others we get to ground them because they can't run and all of that. But uh, everything is going on. Yes, we have done a lot of work in the past 25 years. But look, when you come to aviation, we are scratching the surface. And then we need to roll up our sleeves. We've got no time to waste time and begin to talk to ourselves and think that we have arrived. We have not arrived. It's not yet a so when you meet in a summit like this, don't waste time and talk to each other like passing each other on stage like Casey and Jojo. You must do the right thing. These executives, if you understand where Bobi comes from, she will tell you a history of her, where she comes from. And she must work and supported by boss and boards who are going to embrace and implement transformation. And they must say, Minister, since that summit, these are the things we want. This is the legislation we want you to amend in order to accelerate transformation. I don't want make me nice. That I came here, I had a good time, I saw a lot of people and I appeared on TV. But you guys hard at work. Hard at work means that transformation is going and is grinding. And when people start to challenge some of the things we want to do in this industry, I will know we are working. But as long as they say no, it is good. They say statistically, uh, the good numbers we find of women is those who say chicken and beef uh, on the aeroplanes. And we make a joke about it. Uh, chicken and beef and all of that. But that is the reality. It's an indictment on us and our freedom. So I'm saying to you, I'm going to support you, women to be appointed in boards to become CEOs. But I don't only want women in boards and CEOs. I want the best pilots. That's what I want. Because I give you a job of a pilot, and I, I claim that I've transformed society. Uh, because all boards are led by women. That's not transformation. Transformation means even if a board is led by a man, but the board can say in terms of our transformation standards, minister, this is what we've achieved. And when you come to the next summit, it shouldn't be business as usual. It must evaluate today's resolutions, which we must implement immediately after we depart the following day. I'm elated and um, happy to see so many young and uh, many women in the industry and captains of the industry. And I hope when you leave here, you'll come out with something concrete that is going to help and guide and ensure that we are able to ensure that it is not yet Uhuru and Anuta continue. And that is what we must uh, be about in this particular subject. Breaking the back of the legacy of our painful past starts 
with semi decimating its roots and making deliberate interventions to open up the industry to all South Africans with particular bias towards historically disadvantaged individuals, women and youth. This sixth administration, under the leadership of President Ramaphosa, is firmly committed to positioning this sector in a way that makes it responsive to our national, to our national goals. And with your help, we'll do so. I leave you with the words of American social reformer and women rights activist Susan B. Anthony Colton quote, the day will come when men will recognize women as his peer, not only at the fireside, but in the councils of the nation. Then, and not until then, will there be a perfect comradeship, the ideal union between the sexes. That shall result in the highest development of the race. This we know that only good can come to the individual or to the nation through the rendering of accept justice. I thank you.